for those of you who are just interested in seeing what the river looks like, we'll go through that first for three or four minutes, and then um, after that, I'll go into some details about the river, fly in some maps, things like that. So let's take a look. like fun doesn't it it was a blast and, and you know the the coolest thing about it it's just such a pretty place it's so beautiful up there so the first thing uh, uh, you know, safety first and we all know this you need a personal flotation device and of course you need a helmet 
These are um, high mountain rocky rivers and they move really, really fast. So you need to go prepared. There was a commercial trip putting in in front of us and every single person had on a wetsuit. We have the, uh, the dry suits up hanging up here behind me that I really like. I'm not fond of the cold water in the first place and I'm not talking about chilly water, I'm talking about cold water. Now you may think you're gonna get splashed and then you just you know dry off and everything's you know ready to go. That much is true. But if you end up in the river for an extended period of time, things are gonna get real serious real fast. So it's something to keep in mind. I've uh, one of the reasons I'm doing these videos is you need to try to get as much information on the run before you go as you possibly can. And I'm finding that it's so contradictory out there that the river app says, yes, it's runnable. You know, you're, you're in the green, you can go. And, a, and another website says, no, it's not. And then you look at the uh, blog and you get some other information. So I think that it's critically important before you do any of this is to gather as, as much as you can on the river. So hopefully this will help. Let's look at a map uh, first here. I'll fly the big map in. So the San Miguel is, um, I don't know, probably two and a half, three hours from um, Grand Junction. Um, it is south of Grand Junction. The closest small town is uh, the beautiful place uh, that they call Telluride. And maybe 45 minutes from Telluride. The put-in is at Candace Flat. And um, it's, a, it's a really nice open, big parking, restrooms, uh, real nice put-in there. And then the takeout is at the Upper Beaver Rec site. Uh, for those of you who may want to um, camp or make plans to camp, just um, at one tenth or two tenths down the river is Lower Beaver Campground. It's another real nice spot. The uh, Upper Beaver Rec site there is, um, you know, there's, there's some maps and information on the river. Um, there's a uh, restroom and actually a little dressing area. So um, they've got it set up real nice. They've done a good job with it. Now at the Candace Flat, there's a warning sign there that upstream from this put in, not downstream, but upstream about a half a mile, uh, the river has changed channel and some debris is in the river creating a strainer and definitely a major hazard. So um, Candace, is where, Candace is where you want to put in and it's below the hazard. If you have plans on running anything up above, you may want to um, do some searching to find out what the situation is. You do not want to run through that area. You'd want to take out prior to it. And this is as of June. 2021. Uh, next thing, well, I was talking about hazards. Um, the river itself, um, this particular run, um, you know, it's something, something to keep in mind with um, these, again, high mountain rivers. There's uh, a lot of forest and cottonwood trees on the side of the river, and they can fall across the river. So that's one of the reasons, get as much information as you can to be sure that there isn't a hazard. I didn't see anything that really uh, was heart stopping. You know, there's a few places where, especially at low water, you're forced um, you know, close against the shore and there's a bunch of bushes and branches sticking out, something that uh, you don't want to be aware of, but we didn't have any trouble with any of it. I would say that um, this river is not for a beginner. Um, there's a lot of maneuvering around, uh, man, and especially in low water. Um, it's really, really rocky and really narrow in a few places. So you need to be able to uh, comfortably and confidently 
uh, move the craft around to get through in some places. The type of craft that um, be suggested um, at the sign at the uh, Upper Beaver wreck site, they have a suggestion on um, the CFS on the flow rate and what craft they would recommend. Obviously, uh, the inflatable kayaks, hard shell kayaks, um, at this water level that we ran it out was 300 CFS. Um, so these are fine. The commercial trip was putting in, I believe they're 14 foot rafts and they're, um, you know, basically paddle rafts. Um, the sign there does suggest that at higher water, bigger boats can be used. When I'm talking about CFS, if you're new to this, um, you'll hear the river runners, you know, if I did that at 500 or 2,000 or 5,000, what they're talking about is the flow rate of the river, cubic feet per second. And um, that's, what, that's what the numbers, the numbers are a measurement of the flow. So we did this at 300, a little bit shy of 300. I understand that's got a sweet spot at about 500. It's supposed to be a lot of fun. Haven't done it, so I can't suggest it. The run between um, Cannes Flat and the Beaver Wreck site, it took us two and a half hours. We stopped only a couple times to reposition some cameras. Um, it was close, right around eight miles long, and the put-in is at 7,000 feet. So, um, I would really like for everyone, if I misspoke anywhere, please um, add it to the comments below so that we can all be better informed. If there's something you'd just like to add, something else that you know, again, put it in the comments below and I urge everyone to read that so that we can just have as much, uh, as much as knowledge as we can before we jump onto these rivers. So I really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. And like I always say, until next time, GoPro, stop recording.